All right, this started right up 500 cubic inches. It's in high idle. I'm probably burning a gallon of gas every 10 minutes. <laughs> I can smell the dinosaur fuel. The dinosaur juice is just pouring out of there. See what we got going on here. I just filled it up with 134 refrigerant. I'm just testing it. That's a, uh, oh my God, look at that outrageously high side pressure. 134 is so horrible. Okay, so I'm reading the temperature in the wrong place because I can't get it in. I have to use, you see these little peak nose? I need to use these, but I gotta set my software up for that. So I'm reading the temperature of the line right there. That is not where you read the temperature of the line. 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Where you're supposed to read the line is right there. And that's why I need to set these up because I have to take the temperature of the evaporator, not the temperature after the VIR assembly. So many guys got this wrong many times. You see that ice? That ice is normal under these operating conditions. The temperature. Now let's go look at the temperature. We have 134. At this pressure, go to the PT chart, is a little higher than R12. So you'll have a slightly higher dash temperature. See, there's our suction temperature, 27. Our high side pressure, 125. And look where I'm taking the pressure. The pressure is the highest of high pressure you could possibly breathe, right off the back of the compressor, not on the liquid line. Temperature, 45 degrees. It will stay 45 degrees no matter what. 45, 45, 45, 44, you know, 44, 45, within one degree. You don't have a clutch cycling in and out. The VIR assembly is doing your moderating for you to keep an evaporator, like the old PO STV valves, old PO, uh, POV valves, and what was that Chrysler one or a mechanical linkage? I was too young. I only got to work on a few of them on Rolls Royce and a few old Chryslers. Tenants, I need somebody older than me to uh, give me that name. Uh, Peter Collins. Uh, refresh my memory or call one of your guys and give me the name of the mechanical suction line side valve that literally had mechanical linkage adjusting the uh, the evaporator pressure uh, my Alzheimer's I don't know if that 45,000 is original uh, like I suspected to the diaphragms the vacuum diaphragms it is not working so I got defrost and I'm reading 45 degrees there with some air bleeding in. It should be colder. It's not coming out of here. It tries to do a little, a lot of it's coming down here out of the bottom. Let me switch that around down here. Let's see what we got going there on. Then I'll adjust this. So, there we go. Let me bring that with us. And I'll kick it down too. So I see the temperature just went up. So the temperature coming out of the floor is a few degrees higher, 49 degrees. Oh, I can feel the hot exhaust is literally filling this cabin area. Like 110 degree air is coming up from under the car. I'm gonna kick this down too. Let's uh, a little bit. I think there's a little bit here. I, I almost can't feel it. Yeah, you can see it going down. Let me zoom in on there for you. Come on, focus on my hand, then I'll move it down. There we go. You can see it going back down because I went in the dash. So let me kick down uh, this old beast. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to put it back up. here that's not a good place because I don't have it all the way in that's actually pretty damn bad why can't I get it back in there there we go get it 
You never want your temperature taking being off the surface because anytime you put a temperature sensor on the surface like this, you're getting in what's it's called entrained air. The air that shoots out sucks air all around it in to the path, mixing, giving you a false temperature. The only true temperature is way down the duct. Uh, let's play with this. Okay, where's our temperature back now? 49 degrees. Let's move it. And no, I'm not going to get back into uh, rebuilding those. Maybe when I'm old and retire or somebody has antiques and they want to pay the price. Maybe. Oh, something came out of here finally. Enough times of playing with it. It works. The diaphragm, the valving, uh, it just moved and it now works. Hey, maybe it won't have to be rebuilt or bypassed. When guys don't want to repair them, um, they get underneath and they mechanically bypass them. Okay, there we go. Now, there we're taking a dip now. Let me see if I could clear that in. There we go, you see the temperature going down? Now we're at idle. So we have this 500 cubic inch engine at idle. And you guys on the Facebook group get to see this weeks ahead of the guys on the YouTube channel. Uh, sometimes I release some content to you guys on the Facebook group before I ever release it on YouTube. So that's idle. Now I was going to say, under these working conditions, if I put R12 in the system, it would probably be coming out at about 43 degrees, 44 degrees Fahrenheit uh, out the dash right now. Only a few degrees gets lost and it's not, it's not a hot day. It's just a PT chart difference in the gas. Three, three, three degrees, four degrees, that's all. So that would take it down, say 44, 44 degrees would be coming out the dash. So whatever it's showing here, knock off about three degrees by using R12. Only on the hottest, and, and, every, and 134 got a bad name because of the people who did the retrofits. It wasn't the gas. It was always the wrong charge, the wrong oil, the wrong oil quantity, or something else underlying was already an issue when they did the re, uh, conversion. And it's always the technician's fault. It wasn't the gas's fault. I even got Kian's. Remember the Honda with the Kian compressor? They said, never do a retrofit on. I was doing the Kia Honda compressor that had so many warnings on it by aftermarket and OEM to never retrofit them on. I was sending them up to Tracy and up to Folsom and all these hot places around California. And they were co cooling as good and better than there are 12 because usually by the time to me they were a little low on r12 or somebody did something wrong there was other underlinings so you know it was always the technicians who were at fault and uh let's get the idle back up okay let's pretend we're going down the road and get it up to about 1200 rpms and believe me 1200 rpms in a 500 cubic engine a uh, 500 cubic inch engine you could move down the road pretty damn good. There we go. It looks like it's going to stable out right there. And somebody may ask, well, how do you know that's 1200 RPMs? You don't have a tack um, on a 500 cubic inch engine. Well, when you did this your whole life as a child doing tune ups, you learn RPMs just by the vibration and the sound. Somebody will go, oh my God, that's not exact. Yeah, buddy, whatever. There you go. So it'd be floating somewhere close to 40 degrees Fahrenheit if this had R12 in it right now. And I just heard my blower kick down. something changed an air flap somewhere changed and as soon as that blower kicked down usually kicking down means a higher temperature but what it was the temperature is going up because a flap moved under the dash somewhere and now I'm getting some sort of mixing something just happened that's mixing in a little more warm air so let me see what this does now oh it's working really good so now we're on high speed that wasn't working before. He's going to be really happy that this is working now. 
that'll save them a lot of money or the technician to bypass let's see what will happen right here ah uh, I know the um, the thermostat opened up there's a little I bet you there's a little bleed by either in the coolant here or the hot coolant next to the can this they have a solid fan they don't have a thermal fan clutch so this is a fixed speed fan solid to the engine no clutch no thermal fluid fixed speed compressor these are the ideal situations to do all your tests that we can't do anymore there we go And what are we doing over here? Now remember, we can't use my superheat because I am con uh, connected after the VIR assembly, but the subcooling is correct. Around 13 degrees subcooling. You see how steady that is? That's so beautiful. I miss these days. Look at that low side. You could see where I hit the idle, where I went from idle, and then I went to uh, 1200 RPMs. I'm trying to get it, I'm trying to get a focus for you guys. Sorry guys, it's an Apple and Apple sucks. Overrated for the price they are. So that will give you that, and let's see create a PDF and this is the PDF this is what you give your customer so this report and let's see if I could get that to focus yeah it really doesn't want to focus but this is what goes to your customer and you could give the other things to your customer too so I'll see you guys later oh let me tell you what I'm going to do to this thing. Since this is a really long video, let's just make it really long. Uh, not really, really long. But um, I know this leaks. And this car is going to be here for a while. Somebody, I guess, a customer that's good with the... But remember, this is the 100-year-old shop, too. This is a shop that's been around since uh, Humphrey. Hump? Hump? Or Humphrey? Cars were built here. This was a dealership for them. His grandfather. This is the 100-year-old shop. And I told him we're going to leave this field for about three days and you're going to come out here and turn this vehicle on, turn the air conditioning on every day for about 10 or 15 minutes and shut it off and do the same thing every day for three days in a row as long as it cools. And then I'm going to come back here and look for all the leaks. I'm going to let the dye does what it does best and then I'm going to break out the ultrasonic. And uh, But basically what I'm going to do, I don't need to do all that because on this vehicle, it really needs to get new hoses, all new O-rings. If I decide I want to rebuild the VIR assembly and rebuild or replace the compressor, because I already know there's a leak that was coming off the back of the head of the compressor. So this was leaking and all the dye is down below from when the dye was put in there before. I hear something. You guys hear that? And there's a pulsating. One of these cylinders, one of these cylinders are bypassing or leaking, so I hear it. But it's not a regular exhaust leak. I can hear the I can feel the pulsation in the fender. Oh man, bring back 40 year old memories. Um, all right guys, we'll be back when I find all the leaks and we decide what our course of attack on that. Are we gonna do a complete full teardown and restoration or partial? Let's find out what the customer wants to do, what the shop owner wants to do, and what I'm willing to take on. But because this brings back childhood memories of working on these on my dad's car when I was a kid, I'm willing to put in the extra mile and do a little bit more. And um, 
let's have some fun and let's uh let's not let's not uh commit sacrilege and rip out and throw away the vir assembly and put in a accumulator let's keep that old thing oh i wish my ears were better my old age my old age is kicking in see you guys